Greetings everyone, I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Turn to God with Karen on stormtalk365radio.com. The underlying purpose of this podcast is to find an overcoming in life challenges, to find healing to the brokenhearted, and to find a hope and a future that only comes through the Lord. Please be assured that during this 20-minute episode, I will not be lecturing down at you, I will not be yelling and preaching at you, but rather I'm just sharing what I've learned and what I'm still learning in my journey. We learn together, and um, I welcome you to share what you've learned at my website, KarenJaneCasey.com. Your testimony is important, and someone does need to hear it. Let's start out by praying together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you. We're filled with gratitude for everything you've brought us through. We cast our cares on you. We fear no evil because you are always with us. Lord, we ask and we pray that you save, heal, and protect our loved ones and their loved ones, our friends, our acquaintances, our community, our country. And we even pray for our enemies, Lord, because we know with God all things are possible. Lord, please forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Help us, Lord, to become more and more like Jesus. Thank you for your unconditional love, compassion, and mercy. Your grace is through Jesus Christ. And also, Lord, please be with me now as I speak and give me words that are wise and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today's episode is Overcoming Grief. And you may or may not want to get a pen and paper ready because there will be a few scripture references. Overcoming Grief. If you've ever experienced grief, then you know that to overcome it is a process, sometimes a long and very tough process. Usually, when we speak of grief, we're talking about the loss of a loved one through death. But also, we experience grief over the loss of a dream, over what could have been, but now seems impossible. We are told by others, move on, get over it, let it go. And we know, for our own good, that that is something we must do. Our mourning is only for a season, and we need that period of time for our healing. Our heart has been broken, and we struggle to take our mind off of our sorrow. Right now, I sometimes allow myself to grieve because of what could have been. Wonderful dreams, dreams that involved unity and love and family, and now some of those dreams appear to be cut off from me. And as I allow my mind to wonder to it, I must catch myself before it hits me to the core and again takes away the healing that I've already experienced. We all have to fight it. We're in a spiritual battle. We need to make sure that we keep moving forward. But you might ask, do I even know what it feels like to experience the death of a loved one? Yes, I sure do. And right now, I want to briefly tell you about Bob. I came from a broken marriage that was horribly painful and involved the children. I felt as if I had been chewed up and spit out, discarded into a ditch to die. That's how I felt. I had no hope in me. I was skin and bones from lack of food and from breathing. I didn't sleep at night. But somehow I did manage to continue working, barely functioning. And then I met Bob. Bob was an older man, a successful manager at a local business. He hadn't been in West Virginia for very long. He had been transferred, promoted from Virginia. I was living in West Virginia then. He had an impressive resume, having retired from the military graduated college, became a teacher, and finally, as I met him, he was successful in sales. He understood about failed relationships since he had been married a few times. 
On our first date, I sincerely appreciated him taking me out to dinner. Finally, a full and delicious meal, and I appreciated his kindness. On the next date, he was early to pick me up, and I needed a few minutes to get ready. While I fixed my hair in the bathroom, he yelled and asked me from the living room if I minded if he put a pot of coffee on. And I said, without thinking, sure. Within minutes, I could hear sounds from the kitchen, cabinet doors opening and shutting. I knew that I was busted. I had little to nothing in those cabinets or in the refrigerator. When I came into the living room, he had his cup of coffee and one for me. And we sat a few minutes and talked, not at all about my empty cabinets. That was so embarrassing for me, I could not touch that topic. We went out to dinner again and had a wonderful, uplifting conversation. Before he left that night, he just haphazardly handed me a card saying that it was mine. I thanked him and I didn't really even look at it until after he had left. He had literally taken out of his pocket one of his gas credit cards and given it to me. That was huge. That was huge. I could use that to pay for gas and then that freed up money for groceries. I was filled with tremendous gratitude and hope, hope from, for a good future. Yes, he was much older than me and he filled a spot in my heart where my own father should have left. My father had never been affectionate with me and he did not protect me from harm. This man, Bob, had, had filled that gaping hole in my heart for a father and he was a great companion and friend. My children loved him. My gratitude blossomed into love and we married. As soon as we married, he insisted that I quit my job and go to college well, that didn't make sense to me. I enjoyed my job and I was making $4 an hour. What sense did it make that I would trade that in for college for four years, not making any money? <laughs> I just didn't get it. And I didn't have confidence that I would make good grades. After college, I landed an awesome job in Richmond, uh, in Richmond, Virginia, as a state auditor of the Commonwealth. And I loved that job. After being together for seven years, Bob suddenly died of a heart attack. Only seven years. My world collapsed. I was chronically depressed and nearly lost my job. My children helped me to hold it together. I went through grief counseling. And then all too soon, I claimed to be finished with my grieving process. And of course, that only caused me to take longer in adjusting. And then I began to appreciate the awesomeness of God bringing him into my life for that very brief time. Much was accomplished. It was like changing of the guard, wasn't it? Bob was in my life for a time and for a purpose. I had become a strong, confident woman with a career. The capacity to financially support myself for many years to come. He died nearly 32 years ago, and I'm so thankful to, that God allowed me the time with him. Do you remember the old gospel song, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. In Revelation 21.4, we learn that when we get to heaven, Jesus will wipe away our tears. There will be no more death, no more mourning, no crying in pain. We know that life on earth is temporary and heaven is eternity. We can find comfort in knowing that this too will pass. Our sorrow is only for a temporary moment, a bump in our path. We may have pain and sorrow now during the night, but joy will come in the morning. We can trust in the Lord. Psalm 73, 30, uh, 73, 26. My flesh, my heart may fail, but God is my strength. 
of my heart and of my portion forever. We may, may not be able to see the whole picture now, but when we love the Lord, all things really do work together for our good. I'm so thankful for the time I had with Bob. I believe the Bible is the living word of God. Something happens to us when we think, speak, and breathe his word. I invite you to look up scriptures about grief. And when you find a passage that speaks to you, hold on to it, say it, think it, write it down, memorize it. God's word is powerful towards your healing. Pray. Pray regularly, constantly, sincerely. Say your scripture in prayer. I invite you to read and study God's word. Here are some scriptures I have toward healing from grief. My mantra for this podcast is Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalms 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Matthew 5, verses 1 through 4. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God is always there for us to comfort us and give us mercy. Joshua 1, 9. Be strong and courageous. God is with us. Prayer is always the first thing that we should do. Take every concern to the Lord. We cast our cares on Him, for He is our strength and our refuge in times of trouble. Whatever our problems or our circumstances are, we can cast our cares on Him and leave those problems with Him. We can cast our cares of our grieving to Him, and He will handle things in His perfect will way and timing. His ultimate love and sacrifice for us is obvious in John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus himself said in John 14:6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Proverbs 28.13 tells us that whoever confesses and turns away from his sins will find compassion and mercy. Do we need the Lord's compassion and mercy? Yes, we do. We need it all the time. We need his compassion and mercy. I ask you, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Coming to Jesus is a personal decision. We choose the Lord because he will not force us to come to him. We're not robots. This is the most important decision that we can make. It's a matter of life and death. As in Romans 10, 9, together with a humble heart, we can confess him out loud, and we can do that right now in this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I know who Jesus is. He is the only begotten Son of God. And I know what Jesus did. He suffered on the cross for me, for my sins, and he arose from the grave. Dear God, I am a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me. I repent of my sins, and I need help so I can stand firm in this world of sin and chaos. I need you, Jesus. I am hopeless without you. And I ask you, Jesus, now to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior, and I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. When we say this prayer, we believe, and we are pledging to serve Jesus. Jesus suffered excruciating pain for us, and he overcame. It is by his wounds that we are healed. He understands what we go through, and he will never leave us. The enemy will fight us as we continue along our journey. 
So we should read, study the Word of God, pray, put on the full armor of God, as described in Ephesians 6. We can pray, worship, praise Him, love and serve Him, always with thanksgiving. And in doing this, we find inner peace and joy. Our mourning turns to joy, and that can only come from the Lord. In all of this, we have the hope, the promise of a good future, an eternity in the kingdom of God. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode on Turn to God with Karen, and I pray that we are all encouraged as we continue our journey. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every morning at 6.30 and Abundant Living with Karen every Tuesday morning at 7 and also a new one, Sharing Moments with God, uh, Sharing Moments with Karen on Wednesdays at 7. Both, all of these are Eastern Standard Time. You can download and listen anytime. You can tell I got scrambled because this is, the other Wednesday podcast is really brand new. And you can simply Google the podcast by name and find it on the internet. All of these podcasts are with stormtalk365radio.com. We're available at iTunes, Twitter, and Alexa on Amazon. Hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify. My website again is karenjanecasey.com. C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. I would sincerely love all suggestions or feedback. Please contact me and share your experience with this episode. So before closing, I want to share about you share with you a special event that's coming up. And it's with my favorite nonprofit, Yeshua's House. Yeshua, spelled Y-E-S-H-U-A. That's the Hebrew name for Jesus. Yeshua's House is a faith-based, 18-month, safe haven or transitional home for women and their children coming from domestic violence and heart financial hardships. As a domestic violence advocate, I've been a board member for over four years, and I helped to facilitate some of the classes. Tickets are now available for the annual fundraiser dinner to celebrate his faithfulness to be held on September 20th, September 20th, with the well-known Awesome Hope Coach, Tawana Williams, as our speaker. Tickets are now available through Eventbrite, and um, I bought a ticket through Eventbrite myself, and it's very easy to find, details are very clear, and the payment is simple to make. Being a nonprofit, Yeshua's House does depend on donations. Gifts are tax deductible. Checks can be sent to Yeshua's House, Post Office Box 143, Petersburg, Virginia, 23804. Or you can donate through the website at yeshua'shouse.net. The founder, Angela Brown, can be contacted directly through the email Yeshua's House to the number 2 refuge at gmail.com or you can simply call 804-605-3841. Well, thank you and God bless.